Welcome to our soccer down here, Atlanta United 2 season preview. My name's Jason Longshore. I'll be joined by John Nelson and Jessica Charman as we go, along with a couple of special guests from the twos, Robbie Mertz and Philip Goodrum. We'll talk about the upcoming season that starts tonight. 7.30 kickoff, Atlanta United 2 is in Louisville, Kentucky to face Louisville City FC. You can watch on ESPN+. Plus. Tough competition to get the year started. Lou City, six straight Eastern Conference finals. They were not able to win their fourth straight Eastern Conference championship last year. They lost to the Tampa Bay Rowdies, but they always bring a strong squad for coach John Hackworth. One big arrival is Tyler Gibson. He should come in and be a big part of the middle of the midfield for Lou City. Also, Cameron Lancaster has been signed to a permanent deal after being on loan from Nashville SC. On the Atlanta United 2 side, Tony Annan will be the interim coach through June before he leaves to take the job at the University of South Carolina. You've got the newcomers like Robbie Mertz, who you'll hear from here in just a bit. Rocco Rios Novo, who we've seen a good bit with the first team already in goal, not by design, but Rocco's had some games under his belt so far in CONCACAF Champions League. We'll get into all of that as we go here on the Twos Preview, but let's kick things off with our good friend Jessica Charman with some thoughts on the goalkeepers, but also her reflections on 2020. pleasure that you guys asked me to be a part of this show really excited for the twos and what they have to offer this season anyone knows me just charman just talks footy on twitter that's with an ie you'll know that i never miss a beat to talk about goalkeepers it's definitely something i'm extremely passionate about now when it comes to atlanta united two Really three goalkeepers in the mix this season. Ben Lungard, Rocco Rios Novo and Vincente Reyes. We're going to start with Ben Lungard. You may have heard of him even if you don't follow the twos on a regular basis just because he did recently sign a professional contract with the first team. You might remember Darren Eels and his uh, Big Ben reference. Loved that one. Um, obviously a reference to home and the fact that Ben is quite the sizable keeper himself. Uh, He definitely earned that contract and he's really a perfect example of what the twos is. It's a reserve team and it's a sort of space for these players to develop, to get minutes, senior minutes at a very decent level in USL and to hopefully progress onto the first team and play in MLS eventually. And that's what really awaits for Lungard. He would have had an opportunity to play, uh, in CONCACAF had he been able to be on the bench but of course we know was injured so missed out on that chance but most likely will be Brad Guzan's number two the majority of the time in MLS season he's pretty solid in goal well very solid in goal he's earned his contract good distribution from what I remember from the couple of opportunities I got to watch him play with the twos last season a little unorthodox at time but very effective He's still pretty young for a goalkeeper. You've got to remember that goalkeepers don't really have the same time ticking clock as field players. So that's exciting. Um, He is one of the oldest in the goalkeeper group, the oldest in the twos goalkeeper group, but will like to learn and develop with the likes of Alec Khan, with the likes of Guzan. And honestly, we still might see him in the twos. You've got to remember, and I preach this regularly, when it comes to goalkeepers, there is no way to recreate actual live minutes you can play 11 11 in practice you can create game-like scenarios but there is nothing like first team minutes whether it be for the reserves but serious match time so I would think that we'll probably see him get at least a couple of games this season with the twos to keep fresh because if anything ever does happen and he gets called on in a match they'll want him to be sharp they'll want him to be ready and they'll want him to have that positioning to have that practice in a competitive match. So it truly is important for goalkeepers to stay fresh and sharp. And I myself, when I was on the bench for a first team with Reading uh, back when I was 17, loved getting minutes with the reserves team because there's nothing quite like playing. And it can get really frustrating being on the bench because as a goalkeeper, 
it really takes a rare event, a red card or an injury for a goalkeeper to get a chance. You're not going to get subbed on for 10 minutes at the end like pitch players do. So Ben Lungard, excited by him. Someone that I know everyone listening is excited about is, of course, Rocco Rios Novo, the 18-year-old, on loan from La Nus in Argentina. He has experience with the Argentinian youth setup, so that shows the level of goalkeeper he is, but we can't disregard the fact that he's 18. He's had some big first team minutes, two clean sheets, obviously, in CONCACAF, and a great performance, solid performance, didn't concede. And it does make you question those slightly, and maybe I'm playing devil's advocate a little bit here, but do those minutes help or hinder? They're mostly, of course, going to help. Experience is priceless, particularly at the level that he played against. But now, potentially... There's a little bit more expectation on his shoulders and perhaps you have to wonder he's young and it's understandable that maybe those performances and those minutes go to your head a little bit. So it's really important that, yes, he feels confident. Yes, he feels positive with his early interactions in the season, but needs to stay grounded, needs to stay grinding. Um, from what I saw in the matches, his positioning, reactions, footwork and distribution all seem like real strengths for the young man. A little bit of questioning on the shot stopping from distance. There are a couple of things where he didn't keep it clean, as we like to say. He gave up some seconds and was required to make second saves where he would have hoped to have kept it clean all along. But you know what? He did well with the rebounds and was always in the right position. So I'm definitely excited to see him grow. He'll probably be the starter this season and get minutes under his belt, which is all so important. And I love that he's young and able to mold and impressionable enough to develop how it's chosen to do in the system that Atlanta United 2 and the first team want to play this season. Last up, Vincente Reyes. Now, young Mr. Reyes, 17 years old, very, very young, um, still an academy player, not a professional contract. That's always good for these youngsters to do if they're not sure what they want to do with their future. He can still have that NCAA collegiate eligibility. He hasn't gone ahead and lost that by signing a pro contract. For goalkeepers, I think that's a little bit more important because the likelihood is as a young goalkeeper, unless you're really making a huge difference, you might not be starting early on. So why not go off to college between the ages of 18 and 22 or however long you're there, even if you do a two, three year stint and get that playing experience? Because playing again, as we talked, is invaluable and probably more beneficial for you than sitting on the bench. So I'm glad he's doing that. He has played for the twos already. I did get an opportunity to commentate um, on him last season and was excited. He's still a young prospect, similarly to Rios Novo, has a few things to clean up on, um, but again, has the build of a goalkeeper. If I remember correctly, he's about six foot four, so blessed with that height, extremely strong, good footwork. One thing I'll say about someone of his age is mental strength is so key. It's very difficult for young goalkeepers to recover from errors. It's difficult for all goalkeepers. No one wants to make a mistake. But when you're a youngster, it's really important when you step onto this bigger stage than you're used to that if you do make an error and it was your time to shine, that you don't let it beat you down, that you recover. Goalkeepers have to have a goldfish memory. We talk about that all the time. It's a short term memory for them. I would expect to see Vincent Reyes getting minutes in a couple of games at least, because what Atlanta United has been so good at doing is utilising the twos as a way not only to give potential first team players minutes, but also to give academy players exposure to senior soccer. Less easy to do so with goalkeepers, as we mentioned, though, because you can't just bring them in, sit them on the bench and give them 10 minutes. You really have to give them a whole match. But I would say we're definitely going to see a couple of matches from them. As an importance of such a good goalkeeper group is so important that you need to have competition internally. It helps with a high level of training. You're only as good as your service. We like to say that. You can only be as good as the shots that you're saving. So it's really important that you have a strong group of goalkeepers that's working to sort of provide the service to help you improve, pushing each other in training, keeping each other's on their toes. And what I love about having such a strong group of goalkeepers too is it's a smooth transition for the entire team. When rotation is used, you're not going to see that drop-off point 
or those nerves about putting in any of these young goalkeepers. GK Union looking strong for the twos, looking strong for Atlanta United. Nothing better than a little bit of competition in the goalkeeper roster. Jess Charman at Jess Talks Footy. Jason, over to you. Thanks, Jess. We've seen in this club's history a lot of different goalkeepers come through and get opportunities to move on elsewhere and also get some opportunities to move up to the first team like Ben Lungard. Dylan Castanera has come through the twos program. He's down at Inter Miami now after a year with Fort Lauderdale. Paul Christensen is over at Greenville Triumph. It's an opportunity for Rocco Rios Novo on loan from Lanús to make a claim to be the long-term goalkeeper here in Atlanta. Still have a big polar bear in goal for the first team. It's not going anywhere anytime soon in Brad Kazan. But with Rios Novo, with Lungard, who's 25, with Vicente Reyes, who is a Chilean youth international in the academy, and with guys like Hanji at, at Akron and Garces at UCLA, Plenty of goalkeeping options for Atlanta United as a club going forward. Let's get into some of the returning players this season and hear from Atlanta United 2 play-by-play commentator John Nelson. So let's take a peek at last season and give you a look back at 2020 as we head into 2021. The team finished 3-10-3, but two of those wins came in their last five matches Probably the the signature win, other than the the win against Philadelphia Union 2, came at home in the home finale against New York Red Bulls 2 in a 5-3 shootout. Here's the highlights, courtesy of our friends at the USL and YouTube. Debashti, good chip. Goodrum, in with the right. Conway, header, in! better spot away from Bobasea in net. We see that again, and the power he generated... Looks like another chance quickly. Congur maintain possession. Yes, Boshti, nice turn, spin, pass Babasea 2 0. And Kerr manages to get the slide into Boshti, the spin on the half turn. Caden Clark gets out of a jam, gets it back. Chipped into the area and passed Reyes 2 1. Great work there by Red Bulls 2. Torre puts it in the back of the net. And it's 2-1 just like that. And it's a nice floated delivery. Missed time between Morales and Gurr. 28 goals by Jackson Conway in the 17th. Amir Bashti about two minutes later. Clark winds up and fires. Spilled and in. We're tied at two. With that shot, spills it straight out and a simple tap in there. Morales engaged in the play. Goodrum. Gurr. Punched in, deflected once, twice, and in off the volley, Philip Goodrum. Are you serious? This game is insane, John. All by Gurr, flicked on, but Goodrum, what a way to respond with. Incredible, somehow that ball stuck to his boot there. And again, on that right-hand side, Goodrum and Gurr link up. Oh, my goodness. And Conway! Didn't look like there was anything really coming on there. It's misjudged in the air by Red Bulls, but who's there to respond quick enough? Restart by Atlanta United 2, chipped forward. Boshti sends it into the area, top of the six, deflected. Mejia with a chance to head it in! If a good delivery into the box by Boshti, forces the defender to make a decision, and who's there? Mejia, and that's a difficult header. One of those guys that was a part of the highlight package for Atlanta United 2, Philip Goodrum, We'll be catching up with Jason here in just a little bit. But some of the folks who are returning, just to, to give you a, uh, an idea as to what to anticipate, you have uh, Mackie Diop and uh, Abdullah Diop. They're coming back. And uh, Mackie last season played in 12 matches, had a little over 800, almost 800 minutes, had six goals. He was tied with Jackson Conway for the team lead. That was good enough for 11th in USL Championship. It was on 24 shots. And uh, then uh, Abdullah Diop had 660 minutes with his time in the midfield. Uh, also, a couple on defense to keep an eye on. It's the return of Bradley Camden Fayo, uh, injured for most of the season, played in the one match, played the full 90 minutes, but then wasn't seen as he was battling injury problems for the, the rest of the season. And then Ephraim Morales, who's uh, going to be on loan from Atlanta United, played in four matches, almost 225 minutes. But uh, the highlight for uh, Ephraim Morales when it comes to putting the ball in the back of the net came August 15th in Charleston. 
Here's your highlights from that match against the Battery. It creates something from a set piece. It's a good ball in here. The header is free at the back post. Second opportunity is in. Atlanta United 2 are 2-0 two up. And it's the new signing, Efrian Morales, the 16-year-old, who comes on and scores. They were supposed to come in here and go over to Charleston. The header by Jadama, the follow-up by Morales. The two centre-backs in there causing havoc. A couple of other players to keep an eye on. Uh, obviously, not knowing what the rules are when it comes to players coming down who are on Atlanta United contracts and whether or not they would be uh, available for uh, action in the USL Championship. Look at somebody like Ben Lungard in net. Uh, ben, third last year in saves in the USL Championship with 47, was a stalwart between the, the sticks for the twos. And then obviously Jack Gurr, who has truly proven his worth for both Atlanta United 2 and Atlanta United. First in the USL Championship last year with 108 crosses. One third of those, 36, were chances created, so that was good enough for second in the USL Championship. And uh, as we head toward Jason's interview with Philip Goodrum last year, 22 shots, four assists for Philip, and the highlight, obviously, that we couldn't resist playing from the shootout with Red Bulls, 16 chances created for Goodrum last season. That's a look at your early returns for the players that are coming back for Atlanta United 2 here this season in the USL Championship. Now it's time to catch up with Jason as he catches up with Philip Goodrum. Joined by Philip Goodrum, one of the veterans of Atlanta United 2, back for year number two. Philip, thanks for the time. Yeah, thank you for having me. Happy to be on. Whirlwind 2020 for your first year as a professional where, you know, you're part of the CONCACAF Champions League squad at the beginning of the year. Then we have a global pandemic. You're playing behind closed doors. Just what was it like to get your professional soccer career started in 2020? Yeah, it was a bit, it was a bit different than uh, what I expected. Definitely. So uh, coming in initially, you know, being drafted, joining the twos, being involved with the first team quite a bit. It was a great experience and I was just loving every minute minute of it, you know, kind of like a kid in a candy shop to start out. And uh, still when the first game for the twos started, I was happy, you know, getting involved. We, uh, we didn't win it, but, you know, things were looking up. We had some first team players involved, some academy players involved, but a good, a good group and a good balance. And then uh, boom, COVID hit and uh, everything changed. So uh, I was back with, uh, some family for a while and just kind of sitting out the quarantine and then we joined back in with the group and uh it was obviously very separated initially the usl from the mls group so there wasn't players coming back and forth first team guys going down usl guys going up and uh we had a lot of academy kids involved and then um when glassy and henry went up to the first team to take over Tony came in and that was another change and so uh it was obviously obviously worked out well Tony is a great guy and I think he came in and helped a lot and uh, helped develop me a lot as a player and so you know it wasn't the best year for uh, us results wise obviously and I think we had a lot of maturing to do and we did that and uh it was it was a great experience but uh there was a lot of positives to take out of it as well so I was happy to be involved with the group and I'm happy to be back for year two. Yeah, I thought it was a, a really good year for you, and, and you showed a ton of versatility playing kind of all over the, the front line. Is that something that you were comfortable doing coming in, or was it something that, that Stephen Glass and Tony Annan kind of brought out of you? Yeah, so in college, I played a lot of, uh, uh, you know, front two strikers. We played a different system where I was playing up, up top with a Swedish kid, and it was more of kind of like the underneath forward. And then my senior year, we um, we trans we kind of changed our formation to a front three, and I went back out to that wide position, which I feel is more natural for myself. And you know, with uh, me, M- Mackie, Jackson, and uh, Coleman Gannon last year were kind of the front three that would all kind of rotate. Uh, it was just kind of who was healthy for what game because we didn't have too much depth at the time. And so uh, when I was needed to play on the left. I would go on the left and was happy to do when I was needed to play as the center forward, happy to do it. And, uh, you know, I think um, I, I, I like being the player who can be versatile and play kind of all over the field. You know, when I go up for the first team, a lot of the times I'm playing right back. And, uh, you know, I think that's just something that's going to pay dividends for my career down the line. But, yeah, I like, I like those front three. 
What's something in your game that you felt like developed the most last season? I think something that that I needed to improve on that I probably didn't uh, realize as much in the college game was, you know, finding that extra space to get on the half turn facing forward. You know, initially I was struggling because I was just like, oh, well, I'm going to find the same amount of space and time I do on the ball as I did in college. And quickly I realized that wasn't going to happen. And uh, it took sitting down with Tony and uh, Matt Lowry for a video for a half hour video session one day and they say look these are the things you need to do better these are the pockets you need to find the ball facing forward to be um to be kind of more dangerous to get driving and flip guys and make more runs in behind this is what you need to do so I think I was able to develop further to find those balls in the spaces where I can be facing forward rather than just you know expecting people to give me the ball in great, great areas where I can attack. So it was a lot of more of my positioning and movement. What are some of the changes that you're seeing so far in 2021 with a new first team coaching staff led by Gabriel Heinze? You know, how different is the vibe right now? Yeah, it's uh, unfortunately I've been injured pretty much for almost all of preseason. So uh, it's been a struggle for me not being as involved with the with any, but any group as I would like, but um, just watching training sessions and being involved in a few, I can tell there's a big, just everybody's, everybody's ready to go. Everybody's happy to attack. Everybody's happy to fit the new system and, you know, go out there and the, the new manager is providing a really uh, good vibe that everybody's motivated and ready to impress. When you were coming up in the game before you went to college, who were some of the players that, that you looked at for inspiration? Yeah, so I was uh, rare, and some people laugh at me because I really like to watch the American players. So Clint Dempsey, Landon Donovan, people like, oh, why, why aren't you watching Messi? Why aren't you watching Ronaldo? I was like, I didn't have a hometown MLS team growing up, so the United States men's national team was my kind of hometown team so I loved watching Donovan I love watching um all those all those kind of guys like even Michael Bradley Josie Altidore overseas so Landon Donovan's a player probably has had the biggest impact on uh like my youth career growing up you know it's funny I when you said that I could really see the Dempsey in your game you've got (laughs) that creativity that it can go unnoticed a little bit, you know, like it's not a number 10 kind of creativity. Like you're, you're very tricky in the final third and yeah, I, I totally see the Clint Dempsey comparison now. Yeah. Well, hopefully I can have a uh, similar career. <laughs> What's it been like coming out of college and coming to a team where, you know, you're one of the older players in the lineup every game. Yeah. It was funny because, we would talk about it, joke around with some of the academy boys. Like, I might be a rookie, but I'm the veteran, you know. <laughs> we would have starting lineup, average ages of 19, low 20s last year, every single game. And it was like, this is this is great because this is what you want out of a second team. You want to develop all the young players, the academy boys, the draft picks. And um, so it was, it was different. But I think um, – Coming out of college where I was a two-year captain at the end, you know, I'm, I'm prepared to help provide a leadership role and, you know, learn quickly and uh, kind of just continue to give some of the younger guys guidance where it's needed while also learning a lot uh, by myself. Finishing up with Philip Goodrum on our Atlanta United 2 season preview. Philip, what are some of the, the goals you have for 2021? Yeah, so... It's funny because coming into preseason, I had all these goals in mind. I want to impress the new coaches, want to do all this, and then constant battle with injuries. So it's been really frustrating for me because now I'm like, man, (laughs) I just want to play. But I want to, one, maintain uh, health and so get out there and uh, get my rhythm back and get onto the playing field. But I need to uh, be more effective in the final third. You know, last year I – we scored a few few goals, but uh, personally, I felt I um, I didn't produce as much as I would like. So I'd like to come out and uh, get double digit goals this season, maybe double double digit assists as well. So it's gonna be uh, it's 
going to be a big year for the twos. We have tons of new talent brought in. You have guys like Robbie Mertz and uh, the South Americans coming on alone. So uh, we're going to be deadly in the attack, I think. And I want to be one of the main providers for that attack. That's my goal. How far away are you from a hundred percent? Um, maybe I'm really close now. The timing is, uh, almost matching up. So, uh, this weekend, I think you guys will see a little bit of me and hopefully going forward in the future a lot more. So, uh, I'm getting close. Well, looking forward to watching you guys on the road this weekend in Louisville and really looking forward to welcoming you back to Kennesaw and seeing you firsthand. Philip, thanks for the time today. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jason. Pleasure. Thanks to Philip Goodrum for taking a little bit of time for us on the Atlanta United 2 season preview. He'll be joined by a lot of new faces with the twos this season, even a few who have signed this week. You're going to hear from Robbie Mertz here in just a bit, but let's go through the new additions to the Atlanta United 2 roster. Just yesterday, Alexander Garuba signed with the club. He was with the Oakland Roots last year in Nisa. I had the chance, along with Jessica Charman, to see him star for Center College in the Southern Athletic Association against Oglethorpe in Brookhaven. And Garuba is an explosive player in the final third. He's capable of some really special moments. He had a ridiculously unexpected free kick that caught everybody by surprise from distance where he chipped the goalkeeper from about 35 yards out. Uh, Garuba is an exciting player originally from Atlanta. I think the fans will really like seeing Alexander Garuba. And I love seeing players who, who go the D3 or the D2 route, the NAIA route, maybe not the biggest schools, get noticed because there are guys who can play at that level. And I think Garuba is one of them. Also coming from the D1 route, Aiden McFadden, who was the number 59 pick by Atlanta United in the MLS Super Draft this year, coming into Atlanta from Notre Dame, played a little bit with John Gallagher. They overlapped when McFadden was a freshman and Gallagher was a senior. He actually reminds me uh, a lot of John Gallagher. Wiley player in the final third, a guy who is a little unpredictable, but a guy who is going to work as hard as anybody in the group. I think he's still raw, but I'm excited to see what Aiden McFadden can turn into. And if you want to hear from him, he was on our draft show that myself and Kevin Egan did back in January. We were able to catch up with McFadden just a little while after he was drafted. And you could kind of get the excitement for coming to Atlanta and what this opportunity could bring for him. Four other big signings that have gotten a lot of attention in the offseason and have the 17s very, very excited Matias Benitez, Darwin Mateos, Connor Stanley, and Chris Allen. Allen is from the D2 University of Charleston in West Virginia. Excellent midfielder. Comes over from after spending some time in Sunderland's Youth Academy. He won a national championship at the D2 college level, and he was a first team and most outstanding defensive player and all the accolades for Chris Allen coming in at 22 years old. He'll add a little bit of steel to a midfield that could use it because the attacking talent for this group is ridiculous. You need a little bit of a foundation to, to underpin that, and I think Chris Allen will be part of that side of it. Matias Benitez is on loan from River Plate. He's played for their second team. During the 2019-20 season, he played in 18 games. He started nine. He scored five goals in the Reserve League in Argentina, which they play their games on Friday mornings, the day before the, the first team generally plays. Uh, he's played a little bit this season before coming to Atlanta. But he's a guy who hasn't had an opportunity to break through at River Plate. So coming to Atlanta, he's going to go up a level with more expectations, and we'll see if he is ready to make that jump. Uh, he's also played in the U-20 Copa Libertadores as well, which is a really exciting tournament that I'd love to see CONCACAF replicate and find a way to do that with U18s, U20s, U23s, whatever. Club teams at the youth level playing in a Champions League kind of format. It gives you a whole different level of experience. I think it's really, really important. Benitez will bring that experience with him. Darwin Mateos, 
Venezuelan, 19-year-old attacker coming over from Zamora FC. A lot of experience as a 19-year-old, 62 appearances in the Venezuelan First Division. He scored 13 goals in the Venezuelan First Division and other competitions. In his second season, he played 22 times. He started 10 times, and he scored four goals. He scored in Copa Venezuela play. He's played in the Copa Sudamericana. A lot of experience for a 19-year-old. So Darwin Mateos is one of those exciting young attackers to watch. Stanley is coming over from Manchester United on loan. I know, that's not a loan you normally see here. But Connor Stanley joined their academy in August of 2018. Played a good bit for the U18s. He's played for the U23s, and that's in Premier League 2. It's their reserve league in, in England. And he's, he's young. He was fairly new to the team, obviously with the talent ahead of him at Manchester United. The breakthrough into the first team is going to take a minute. This is a good test for him, and I think you're going to see Atlanta United 2 and, and USL Championship as well become a place for players to come and get a different type of experience from where they're coming from. In the case of Benitez coming from Argentina and that culture, part of the test is adapting to a new culture. Can he handle the challenges? Can he handle the adversity? It's going to be the same for Connor Stanley. It's a very big part of becoming a fully-fledged professional. Let's get into the player you're going to hear from here in just a minute, Robbie Mertz. A couple of great years for the Pittsburgh Riverhounds. He's 24 years old. He's going to tell you why Atlanta United 2 was a good destination for him, what he's hoping to accomplish, and how excited he is to represent Atlanta United 2. Enjoy hearing from midfielder Robbie Mertz. Jason, thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. What led you to Atlanta? You were available as a free agent. You chose to come to Atlanta. Why did you pick coming down south? Yeah, I, I have to be honest with you. It wasn't the easiest decision. Um, you know, I, I had returned home. Uh, I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'd returned home after my, my college playing days uh, and, and spent two years, though, uh, two years there as my um, to start my pro career and um, obviously we had, a, we had a lot of success in the field in Pittsburgh, but, um, I had also been around Atlanta's club a little bit, uh, coming out of college at, at Michigan, been to their combine my senior year, um, knew a few people within the organization. And, um, from my perspective as an outsider at the time, Atlanta United was the best, it's the best club. It's the, the cream of the crop in the United States when it comes to soccer, um, from an organizational standpoint. And so that was just something that, when they became interested in me um, in that capacity and they saw my potential to develop uh, in that organization, it was an opportunity I couldn't pass up. And I was really excited just to take on a new challenge, get outside my comfort zone um, and, and really push myself and see kind of what I could do as an individual player, um, along with helping, uh, helping the two team and the, the first team, if, if it gets to that, um, to be more successful in the field, hopefully. Did that opportunity to to work with the first team really factor into this a big way? I think a lot of people look at the academy players with the twos, but you know Lawrence White signed a, a first team deal after his strong work with the twos. Ben Lungard signed a first team deal with a strong work with the twos. There's plenty of different pathways to get to Atlanta United's first team. Yeah, I have to be honest. I mean, that's definitely as an individual player. Um, when you look at your career, um, I think everyone has different goals. And for me, um, um, being at the MLS level is, is still the number one priority for, for myself and my career. Um, and obviously there's a lot that goes into that. It's not just what you're doing as an individual player, like being on a winning team, um, can obviously help you a lot. So there, there's a lot to say about helping the twos to progress, helping those, those Academy kids in their development as well. Um, but, but for sure, um, if I'm being honest, like the, the first team, is obviously where I want to be eventually. And um, that was a big draw for me, um, especially seeing that Atlanta is a club that do does put that faith and trust into some of their second team players to make the jump. Um, and that was something that, you know, I knew Ben prior to um, had spoken to him about it and he just had nothing but great things to say about being part of the club here. So um, that all helped. 
the last two years in Pittsburgh, 12 goals, eight assists with the River Hounds. Uh, great manager and Bob Lilly to, to learn from. What are some of the lessons you, you take away from playing for Pittsburgh? Yeah, Bob's a demanding coach. Um, I have the utmost respect for him after playing under him for two years. Um, I think the growth that I saw in my game was immense. Um, and I had certainly so much to learn coming out of college and still do. Um, but I, I really did see a lot of growth under him. And I think the biggest thing is that he's so detail oriented. He, he likes to um, sort of micromanage the game. Um, and I say that in a positive way because he gets the most out of his, his players, um, each and every one of his players. Um, if you're not always turned on on his team, then um, you're not going to succeed in his team. So uh, I think that's why you've seen Pittsburgh. Maybe we, we weren't always the best team on paper, but we we managed to overachieve, I think, a little bit. Um, obviously, didn't have the success we wanted in the playoffs, but we were consistently one of the best teams in the league. Um, and just to play in a winning culture like that is, I think, uh, it's really important and hopefully something that I can bring to the table with the second team down here because um, they've had a lot of a lot of good things working. Um, I've played against them. They're not an easy team to play against, um, but some sometimes maybe that that winning mentality and culture, if you're not around it, it can be difficult to get those wins. And maybe that's something that I can bring to the table for them as well. Yeah, the Riverhounds always struck me as a really difficult team to beat. It, it was always a tough team to break down. And it's interesting you mentioned Lily being um, a guy who's micromanager, gives you a lot of information to work with because that's what a lot of players have said about working with Gabriel Heinze and the staff. And I know you, you've been involved in everything. We saw you in the Charleston joint training exercise. You know, are you seeing any similarities between your experiences so far? Uh, yeah, I mean, there definitely are similarities. I think if you want to, if you want to narrow it down to one thing, it's passion. I mean, they're, they come from two completely different cultures, two completely different soccer backgrounds as well. Um, so as far as their philosophies, I would say, well, and, and really going into the game, the nitty gritty, the tactical part of it, they're actually, they can be quite different. Mm -hmm. um, but they both have that burning passion for the game and they, they want a lot out of their players and they're going to push them to be uh, um, performing at as high a level as they possibly can be. So um, that, yeah, I, I think I'm well prepared for um, what Gabby is asking for from us in that sense, because um, I've been around a guy like Bob who uh, certainly asked a lot of us and, and wanted us to be at our highest level each and every day. So with that shift in, in the way that you'll play, how comfortable are you in the way that Atlanta United plays as a club right now? Yeah, I think, uh, <laughs> thankfully, they, they do their due diligence in their recruitment of players. Um, so I think they wouldn't have brought me down if they didn't think that I could fit into kind of the philosophical nature of um, their playing style and everything. Um, so, yeah, I think it, it can certainly mesh pretty well. I mean, I'm a player who likes to, try to cover a lot of ground in a game. Um, that's something that I stress. Uh, so a high pressing nature is, is good for me. Um, and I think there's still so many areas that I can improve in terms of being a central midfielder as part of uh, Gabby's system, but um, definitely have made strides already. And um, he, he's the great thing about him is that he's been paying attention to every player, whether you're at the top or the bottom of the, the depth chart so to speak. And um, I think that's something that you hear the managers at the very top of the, of the game of soccer um, in the best leagues in the world. Like that's something that they, they talk about is being detail oriented and really giving their best as a manager to every player in the club. Um, and I've, I've felt that already and I've um, kind of been learning a lot and trying to mesh as, as, as best I can. So um yeah, I, I think it, it can be a good fit, hopefully. Um, but there's there's a lot of room for improvement um, to get to that point. Finishing up with Robbie Mertz on the Atlanta United 2 season preview for 2021. You come into a different situation with the twos where maybe you were one of the younger guys in Pittsburgh, and now you're going to be one of the veterans a lot of times uh, on the two squad. You know, have you thought about that difference and what it's like to go from being, you know, the new guy to now one of the leaders? Yeah, uh, 
it, it's definitely, it's a bit strange to make the shift so suddenly um, because I think, you know, I, being at a college program for four years, that's a transition that you make, right? Like you come in as a freshman, uh, everything is new. Uh, there's so much to learn um, and that's comparable to rookie year, but you have that four year progression where you kind of graduate slowly into being in more of a leadership role. Um, but this was a bit strange just because um, coming from Pittsburgh, I think last year was, was a little bit better. And I, I um, just because I was on the field a lot, you know, maybe took on a little bit more of that role, but certainly coming down here and being around 16, 17, 18 year olds, again, um, playing the game and they're full of energy, maybe even more so than myself um, is, is <laughs> that's an adjustment. And um, certainly I'm just trying to find, the way that I can best relate to them and share my experiences without being um, condescending, without telling them that, that I know better because ultimately I'm still young um, when you look at it in the grand scheme of things. And I still have a lot of things to learn as well. And when you're, when you're shifting between uh, the first and the second team, if you're doing that, then it's constantly going from being the, the elder statesman or the veteran to being essentially a, what's considered a rookie again. Um, and you're doing that like on a day to day basis, like back and forth. So um, you, you, it's it's an it's a mindset adjustment constantly, but something that I'm enjoying and I'm learning a lot out of it. Robbie, thank you so much for the time. Looking forward to seeing the season debut this weekend in Louisville and, and can't wait to get into the Fifth Third Bank Stadium in May and see you in person. Thanks again. Awesome. Thanks, Jason. Thanks again to Robbie Mertz, Philip Goodrum, John Nelson, Jessica Charman for contributing to our Atlanta United 2 season preview for 2021. Three games on the road for the twos before they play in Kennesaw at Fifth Third Bank Stadium. It starts tonight in Louisville, Kentucky against Lou City. 7.30 kickoff you can watch on ESPN+. Plus, Just like you can for all of the USL Championship and Atlanta United 2 matches. Two trips out to Oklahoma City to face OKC Energy May 1st and May 16th before the home opener on May 19th at 7.30 in Kennesaw against FC Tulsa. John and I will be on the call for the twos games this season. Looking forward to seeing this young team that has a little bit different feel this year. And I think you got a little bit of a glimpse of that hearing from Robbie Mertz especially there's a lot of interaction with the first team, a lot of coordination between the entire club, and the academy will be part of that as well with Tony Annan's involvement here early on. And the, the foundation that has been set for bringing young players through, getting them experience with the twos, and then seeing them move on to the first team. Jackson Conway, Jack Gurr from last year, so many players, Ben Lungard, have taken advantage of their time in the USL and with Atlanta United too, and parlayed that into bigger things with the first team. Can't wait to see who's next. Thanks for being part of it. Thanks for listening to the show. We'll have recaps of Atlanta United 2 matches on the network all season long. After home games, John and I will go live on Twitch to give you our thoughts from the booth. After away games, we will have a recorded review where we'll each kind of give you what we saw in the match, sometimes immediately afterwards, sometimes where there's a conflict with the first team, it might be the next day. But we will have a recap of every Atlanta United 2 match all season long on the SDH Network. Thanks for being part of the show. Good luck to the twos tonight, and we'll see you for some action at the Fraction coming up in May.